Good afternoon. How are you? We just got back from a beloved time with our horses and I was getting changed to spread mulch today because we had a hundred bags delivered and the, the ground is starting to grow and it's easier to spread it early than later to get around all our plants. But listen, it, my husband got called in, so I figured I'd look at the news and thank God my husband got called in to an overtime call and he may not be back for a couple hours. So look at this. I did some searching, like I'm always trying to bring you the latest and greatest using Sandman's links. Okay. So CIA wrote, I just got a text that the Iraqi minister is live now. I don't know about that, but I'm going to give you my report based on my intel that was just posted at 3.05 today, Friday. There's conflicting reports and speculation surrounding the recent attacks on Iran. Okay. So it said, recent events in Iran have sparked a world of speculation and conflicting reports raising questions about the involvement of external actors and the nature of the incidents. Iranian authorities have presented a narrative suggesting that the explosions in Ishafan were the result of internal factors downplaying external involvement, particularly from Israel. However, neighboring Iraq has provided contradictory information, adding complexity to the situation. So there's a section that says what happened in Iran and what happened in Iraq. I'm going to go to the what happened in Iraq section, because that's what we're focused on, right? Social media users on Friday shared pictures showing the remains of an Israeli missile that was reportedly headed to Iran and fell in the Al-Azazia district in Wasit. U.S.-funded Al-Harara channel cited a high-ranking Iraqi security source on Friday, revealing that a series of missiles had landed in two Iraqi cities the previous night. According to the source, two Israeli missiles landed in Wasit government adjacent to Iran, while another landed in the Latifia area south of the capital of Baghdad. The source also indicated that these missile landings were likely due to technical malfunctions. In other words, it was a mistake. It wasn't meant to be there. In contrast, the Security Committee of the Wasit Government Council issued a clarification following the controversy of a reported fall of an Israeli missile in that district north of Nasiriya. Um, Committee Chair Habib al-Badri told Shafak News Agency that the reports of the fall of an Israeli missile in the al Azia district are incorrect. Instead, it was the remains of a rocket propellant that fell in the al Dier area north of west. He explained that explosive experts removed the missile material to a safe place for security analysis and identification. Moreover, the Jerusalem Post said explo explosions were heard in Baghdad and Babil government in Iraq. Government in Iraq. According to the Israeli newspaper, residents in Erbil and Mosul in Iraq reported hearing the sounds of fighter jets as well early Friday morning. Specific details about the nature and targets of these explosions remain unclear, and the Iraqi authorities did not comment on the incident. But a source within the Iraqi Interior Ministry refuted reports of explosions within the Iraqi territory. The source clarified to Shafak News Agency that while military radars detected unidentified objects passing over Iraqi airspace, no targeting or explosions were recorded on Iraqi territory. Now they go into who attacked Iran. American officials and Israeli local media have attributed the explosions in central Iran at dawn to Israel. The Israeli newspaper Jerusalem Post, citing a government and, a, and security source, explicitly stated that Israel was behind the attack. According to a source cited by al Haraj, correspondent in Jerusalem, Israel's response to that reported attack was framed as an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The source indicated that Israel targeted the location responsible for the alleged, atta the alleged attack. The Jerusalem Post, citing two sources in the Israeli Ministry of Defense, reported that military aircraft launched long-range missiles at an Iranian military base base in Isfahan, Isfahan um, which contradicted Iran's assertion that drones were involved in the incident. On Friday, Israel maintained silence regarding the reported attack because it's already evening there. It's nine o'clock there, right? While the United States explicitly denied any role. At a press conference in Italy, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, declined to comment on the matter beyond affirming the United States' commitment to Israel's security. Blinken emphasized that the U.S. did not participate in any offensive operations related to the incident. Similar Israeli Army spokesman um, Avishai Adrai, sp speaking to Al Harar, neither confirmed nor denied Israel's involvement in the attack. Adore stated, no comment at this time, leaving the situation surrounded 
surrounding the reported attack and its attribution shrouded in uncertainty. So guys, this is what I said to you. We do not know what happened. They are, people are spreading fear, you know, because why? Because they are just, guys, you cannot trust anything you see. I'm bringing you what's coming right out of Iraq, what has been approved by Iraqi papers to be published based on the links that Sandman gave us. I trust his information over anybody else, you know, spreading information. Also, I saw that um, Mark Z is very positive about this, that the bondholders are already, that are, the bondholders are being paid. So, you know, it's all good. So now I'm going to go to the, all the Intel people that we love here and summarize those. Now that I'm done with the links from Sandman, um, even though still pray for him because he's over there. Just keep praying for any military in harm's way. How about, right? Um, this is Newshound Guru Glare today. Article one, Iraq's prime minister heads to Michigan to meet Arab Americans at a tense time for the Middle East. Article two, Iraqi prime minister Mohammed Shial al-Sadani makes quick visit to Metro Detroit. Quote, Iraqi prime minister Mohammed Shial al-Sadani was in M Metro Detroit on Thursday evening for a quick visit where he planned a trip to Dearborn Heights Mosque in a Westfall and a West Bloomfield Country Club to meet with local members of the Iraqi diaspora, Wayne County officials said. Then you got Militiaman. God, we love Militiaman. Thank you so much for getting on YouTube and separate, you know, man, you can separate yourself, but I'm glad you're here in this community. Al Sudani has a big motorcade once again. The third or fourth one in Dearborn, Michigan this evening. He is in the United States still. There's a large population of Iraqis in Dearborn, Bloomfield, those per portions of Michigan. Okay, then Mark Z, I don't know if this was today or not, but I did, it's, um, Ronnie has been great at sending me stuff, and I love her for that, so thank you, Ronnie. Uh, this is Mark Z, I hear Executive Order 13303 not expired until May 13th of 2024. Mark Z, let's think about this. If it was your job to make certain that the timing was clouded, <laughs> which they do, come on, they know we're watching, right? If it was your idea to make certain the timing was clouded, would you not extend that executive order? Of course you would. This is not a concern. This is like picking up a Kuwaiti paper the morning of the RV and reading three different articles about how they cannot change their value yet. Of course, this is what they are going to do. You got to expect disinformation because they don't, you just got to expect this. So keep your prayers out there. Um, Frank 26, Houston, Houston, Texas and Dearborn, Michigan, Allah Sadani arriving motorcade. I stopped counting when it got up to 50. You're telling me that all these gigantic monstrous vehicles that are escorting the prime minister of Iraq is to bring, is to bring a program rate to the world. You need this type of security for toilet paper value. Of course not. This is serious. When the delegation returns back to Iraq, we already told you in his opinion, what is going to happen, Right. And then Guru Claire, another article, Sudanese arrives in Houston, Texas, quote, Prime Minister Mohammed Shial al-Sadani arrived this afternoon uh, in the city of Houston in the state, that was t yesterday, as part of his official visit to the United States of America. Then we got Mountain Goat. We love Mountain Goat. The news just keeps getting better and better. His CB, her CBI contact, um, got to make sure your pronouns are correct. <laughs> wink, wink. Uh, my CBI contact again confirmed to me that this meeting of Iraq with the White House had to take place and could be seen as a healing meeting between the two countries. One issue was, of course, the status of leaving or pulling out of U.S. forces. This issue is clear as the U.S. forces do not plan to leave Iraq and destabilize the Middle East, especially in these turbulent times. Don't worry, it's not going to happen anytime soon as long as, gosh, what was I reading? It just switched on me. As long as long-term plans are being negotiated to give Iraq what it wants and give U.S. what it wants. I'm just saying. And then Rod Steele, I love to see his summaries. I think I did this one this morning. There has never been this big of a delegation from Iraq over here before, and so many partnership agreements being signed at one time. All the agreements being activated are about the Iraqi economy. They are also visiting Michigan and Houston, where Iraqi populations and Iraqi banks are. Also, Bush Sr. arranged for the Iraqi Central Bank of Iraq servers to be located in Houston. The U.S. banks are ready. All the staff is in place. All sounds very positive, and silence these days is golden for sure. I agree. Then we got Frank 26. This was from last night, but I want to include him because we love him. He says, you know, the competition that is going to be with those private banks from the Central Bank of Iraq in the U.S. <laughs> with American banks. It's going to be massive, and people don't even understand that right now. American banks are going to come to you after they know you. They know who has dinars. The U.S. Treasury will tell them, 
Yes, they're going to tell them. They already told them this is massive, what is about to happen. And if you're part of my uh, three steps to a safe exchange, you have been um, using my strategies, which will keep you safe, right? Make sure you don't, <laughs> make sure you stay safe. No matter what. Um, let's see. This was this was Mark Z yesterday. I'll just say this. I continue to hear rumors of the different spots that Sudani has visited. I'm hearing there was a clandestine meeting with a signatory. Um, with a signatory um, of seven of the banking families from China. Hang tight, guys. We are sort of oh, we sort this out over the next day or two and figure out what is helpful rumor. But things are very positive. Um, I just, guys, I just love this. The Iraqi Private Banks Association praise Al Sudani's visit to Washington. Militia man says Iraq is now a secure and stable and debt-free state. Now they're going to do a state of expansion of their economic reforms. I recorded all this before. I think Paulette is new down here. The visit comes in a very heated situation and everyone is waiting for its outcomes and the Sudanese carries ideas and projects that move towards consolidating their relationship with the American side and transferring it from the process of guardianship to friendship. And that way it allows Iraq to be free, right? To assume its role, a pivotal role in the region. Iraq needs the U.S. guardianship to end, accordance with the United Nations 1483. So guys, what do you think? Comment down below. Do you think this thing is about to happen? Or are you more guarded, right? Or were you scared when you heard about the thing? Or did you listen to my live stream that calmed all your fears? God told me this is done. I hope you will subscribe and tap the bell and continue to fast and pray this in. We usually fast the first three days of every month. We've been doing this for a while now. And look at all the movement. So I think it's up to the Christians to bring this thing in. If you're one of those, please subscribe and tap the bell. There's no mistake that you're seeing my video. We do coffee and conversation every morning, including on the weekends. Um, my husband's a firefighter, so we work really hard to help people in our communities. And uh, so I hope you will honor me with a subscription and a like. God bless. Have a good day.